All right. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Saturday morning uh, real estate marketing show with Ruthie Rocks, Ruth Albrand, and Marketing Max. How are you today, Ruth? I am fantastic. And I just want to give a shout out first off to thank everybody who sent me cards and the Facebook comments and wishing me happy birthday and uh, all my staff that got together and, and gave me cards and gifts. And my husband gave me flowers and took me out to dinner. And uh, Aaron and Jackie uh, Taylor joined us, which was really sweet. Oh, nice. And I'm just looking over at my uh, counter, which is filled with cards. Uh, I got a beautiful carafe from someone and I got some wine and some spirits and uh, I even got an eyebrow plucking tool. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it was one of the yeah. best birthdays. And thank you all. I really appreciate it. Believe me, when you're 72 years old and you have this many people that, that send you wishes, it really means something. So no, thanks to everybody. And uh, Gary didn't say anything to me, but we'll forgive him for that. I'm going <laughs> to get him out of the picture. <laughs> you got it. Uh, no, I mean, and, and your birthday is officially on, on Valentine's Day every year, right? Yeah, my name was Ruthie Hart. You figure that right. out. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> I was just born lucky. <laughs> <laughs> fantastic, fantastic. All right, Ruth, what's happening in our market? Anything uh, interesting and change this week? Well, I, you know, I was, I was, um, I told you earlier, I was kind of pulling at straws is to, is to bring some value to what the differences are. Mm -hmm. And the only things I want to say is that the active listings back in January of 2018, and now I'm talking about Clark County, and I'm talking about all the listings, townhomes, condos, single family homes, um, was around 13,523 mm -hmm. units. This January, the active listings in that same demographic uh, location, 17,951. So obviously we have increased. Wow, by almost 4,000. Yeah, when in you go down, yeah, when you go down to the single family homes and you just kind of get into the Henderson, uh, Las Vegas area, uh, last year we had 5,540 five single family homes. Mm -hmm. And uh, this year we have 8,969 as of the end of January. Oh, so okay. uh, yeah, that that's, that's a comfortable difference. I think I, I, I think of everybody, I say this all the time, at least we're not out there fighting with, you know, other um, fighting, having our buyers fight for their, the home that they want because of all the competition with the other sure. offers. Sure. Yeah. So I think that's a good thing. Um, and I think it what, makes it more the, comfortable. Yeah, what's the uh, average days on the market? Do you have that stat somewhere? Yes, I do. Uh, 27. Was 27. In, yeah, last year it was 22. So this oh, year so it's 27. We're still tail, under tail, that's not <laughs> right. Uh, that's not a huge difference. I remember when average days on the market used to be 60, and that was a regular, <laughs> a regular market. You know, well, so. six actually uh, six months of uh, inventory is uh, normal, and mm -hmm. we just have twenty seven. We still are within the month, uh, and that's of course uh, the median days to sell. So right. yeah, right. And and I think the interesting thing we were talking about earlier. Hey, Linda Joe, so happy you join me every Saturday. Me and Max, I appreciate it so yeah. much. Yeah, feel free to give us a comment or ask us a question uh, anytime. We love that you're watching. Um, Anyway, the, the interesting thing that, that we were just talking about was um, the, in 2018, the single family home uh, median price was $292,000. Mm -hmm. And that's a mortgage payment. If Roughly, you just right. take 5%, 30 years, is $1,567. Yeah. And then if you go to this year, in January of 2019, uh, the median price is showing up at 315. Right. And so that average mortgage payment then would be $1,690. Right. And from a real estate agent's perspective, Max, what does that mean? Well, obviously, I mean, the, the, the borrower needs to come up and qualify for $140 more or roughly about $140 more a month. But uh, I, I think that's very doable. And I, I think you were referring back to when I had a stat last week when I said that, uh, you know, referencing in the 2007, 2008 era where 
the medium, you know, sometimes when the medium home price of a market is five at five times the rate of the medium household income, it becomes an issue in sustainability and price sustainability because affordability is is almost uh, you know at at the very peak there and is at the very peak, and we saw that in oh seven oh eight. So, but yeah. right now, what we're experiencing right now is is we're not there quite yet. I mean, we're in what the the average home price now is three hundred fifteen, yeah. and we talked about how five times medium household income for Las Vegas would be roughly about three seventy five. So we're a little bit a ways away still, and so there's still opportunity right now to really go out there and 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 create some uh, at least a sense of urgency for your buyers, yes. right, right? Uh, and your sellers to potentially you know move their inventory. A little yeah. bit because you know, I mean, you can kind of use both sides of the coin there. You know, uh, working with the the listing or or the sellers to tell them like, hey, w- maybe we need to be a little bit more reasonable with the expectations <laughs> of prices of your home. I get it. You know, your, your home values have gone up ten percent the last you know five six years in a row, but you know, we're getting you know getting to a place where we, we probably need to consider if you want to get out of this place and, and move on to your next home. So, and then on the buyer side to give them a sense of urgency that, you know, prices will continue to rise here and yeah. we probably need to make a decision and you're not going to find maybe your the, the 100% perfect home, but if you can get 90% of everything that you're looking for, you know, let's make a decision and, and pull the trigger. So, so you're uh, saying just, just to say it over again. So, uh, the combined income of a household uh, mm-hmm. to qualify in today's market is what at three at three fifteen, roughly seventeen hundred a month mortgage payment. So if I can do just my quick uh, bro math here, as I call it, um, I don't work in the mortgage industry, just full disclosure right now. But, uh, <laughs> but you used and, to. And, and I used to. So some programs right now, like I think FHA sometimes can go up to you know, 50% debt to income ratio. Yeah. So at seven, if you had no other debts and your mortgage payment right. with insurance and taxes and stuff like that end up being roughly about 17, 1800. Then you need to, at a minimum, make thirty, you know, four, thirty-five, thirty-six hundred dollars a month at a minimum, right? Any more than that, then you you, you can you know, have a better job qualifying. Uh, but you know, you throw in a car payment in there, uh, on average about three hundred and fifty dollars, and that you know brings up your debts to twenty-one, twenty-two hundred. So really, from an income standpoint, you probably want to be around forty you know, $400 a month or so yeah. uh, gross income to, to qualify. And that's uh, combined. Mortgages. combined, And household. that's combined. Correct. Yeah. All so, incomes in the household. So we, so you're basically saying that as long as, until we get to $375,000 medium price, we're still in the market based on the fact that the average household in Las Vegas makes 75,000. Correct. Correct. So, yeah. and yeah, and, and prices won't drastically start slowing down until that point, right? So uh, I, I think uh, once it hits, once the medium household or medium home that gets sold is 375, I mean, there's a probably a good chance that we're probably going to see a little bit of price slow down, yeah. um, you know, it, or even stagnation at that point, because simply over five times, people can't afford it. Right. So they're not going to buy. And so then exactly. the prices adjust. Exactly. Then supply becomes, you know, overruns demand and then the market dynamics comes through. <laughs> yeah. So I think that we're really in a good spot here in Vegas. I, you know, cause 375, if we get up to that point still is affordable to the people who are moving here from other parts of the country. Mm-hmm. And um, again, because our median uh, income per household is 75,000. So we're in good shape for a while. We're in good shape, and, and our market's a little. Anybody with sometimes you know stats can say lots of things, but yeah. I like to just get it down to the nitty gritty. And we're, we live in an interesting um, you know market here because we have a lot of people coming to our marketplace that one retirees right, which could boost yes. up the income a little bit more. A little, the, not only are they on fixed and social or security, but also they have pensions and things of that nature that could raise up the average. And then the wild card is if we have any industry other than you know the service industry that comes into the market with everything that's happening right now, um, that could continue to raise the level of income in our, our, our city as well. So there's a, a lot of things 
positively happening that could yes. potentially rise and raise that that medium household income in several different yeah. ways, which is very exciting for yeah. our town. Well, you heard that Amazon is not going to put their yeah. second headquarters into New York City. And I'm here to tell everybody that we posted a blog, oh, uh, maybe six, I don't know, probably within the last 12 months, early January-ish, I think, about uh, the Nevada Development Authority put together a fantastic video about Las Vegas. Mm. And they put it together to show Amazon how wonderful and dynamic our city is. And we were in the running. So you never know. We never know. And, we, and we're so close to all the key hubs, you know? Yes. Three and a half, four hours away from LA, an hour and a half flight from San Francisco. I mean, so the biggest challenge that any company has in bringing you know, their, their corporate headquarters or making a major investment in any city is they got to make sure they, the, the workforce is there and the yeah. uh, qualified workforce is there. So, but I think you can, a lot of people want to move here. I mean, there's yes. so many things. Yeah. <laughs> I think and, you can attract talent to come here. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And we do, you know, I just, I just think that we don't, uh, I don't know. I like to, to look at the review journal every day. I still get it in printed form as well as on my phone, but I still like to flip through that, the business section and see what's going on because sure. we don't always hear about these little things that are happening here. Here. I want to say hi to Tim Long, who was with us last week uh, from House Check, and then also Brian Foster and uh, Linda Joe. We see, you know, we, we've got some regular viewers, and it's really cool. And yeah, absolutely. What, yeah, I th we really appreciate it because uh, sometimes we're just uh, chattering away here. We don't know <laughs> if anybody's listening. Um, All right. <laughs> I always boosted and I always boosted out there later, but right. uh, in any event, um, today I want to talk about a really exciting subject. Um, I met at Agent 2021 last month. I met uh, Chelsea Pitts, and she's with Fidelity National Title, um, and she's into marketing. There and she's a, a speaker. She actually spoke at Agent 2021. Oh wow! And yeah, and she's all about branding. And we, and of course, we connected through Pinky, and we had a whole group of us, and we had Melissa a couple of weeks ago that that was on our show that I met at Agent 2021. Mm -hmm. um, quite a dynamic event, and I took so many takeaways from it. But one of the things that I want to talk about today is building your brand, and this is something that I I think that Chelsea's either written a book about or she's about to write a book about. And this mm. will be her second book. Oh, wow. um, yeah, she's a, a phenomenal person. And so we're going to talk about building your brand today. And, so, ex and we're going to begin. Yeah, yeah. Good question, Ruth. So is she the marketing like person for Fidelity? Yes. Yes. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. And just to, just to throw a shout out to you, Ruth, uh, if everybody, anybody wants to hear Ruth's voice on the Gary V uh, podcast experience <laughs> or the audio experience, uh, look up the February 2nd episode of the Gary V audio experience at the 18 minute mark. Uh, you hear Ruth asking a question in New York. So. Yes, and it's kind of funny because he said, are you going to be disrespectful, not raise your hand? <laughs> I thought, oh, my God, you know, that's just it's like great. me. Uh, but, yeah, I was addressing the issue about the data and Zillow and things yeah. like that. Yeah, it was quite a topic there. Yeah, but thank you for that. I, I appreciate right. that. Right. <laughs> so building your brand. So one of the first things that, you know, you want to do is, of course, where do you begin? Do you have a niche? You know, some people um, are into luxury or they're into senior buying or they're, mm -hmm. you know, um, they're into a, a specific area. So people have niches. And so the first thing to building your brand is education. Now, there's five right. E's. There's five right. E's. Let me just. So, so before we go into that, let's just spend a, a second here to help people understand the importance of choosing a niche. Why do you want to choose a niche? Right. So here, here's my answer to that is because if you choose a niche, then you can spend a lot of your effort concentrated on understanding a very finite amount of information that you can be an expert on and talk you know, a lot about. And then you can get to understand the audience that's in that niche very well as well. And so just because you choose a niche doesn't mean that no one else is going to use you outside of your niche. In fact, 
because you sound much more authoritative and as an expert in that particular area, they automatically assume that you're an authority in other areas of that industry as well. So it's just a way to efficiently utilize your marketing efforts and your energy in order to uh, create a, a very concise marketing message. Absolutely. And um, niche is rich and broad is broke. Right. What do I mean by that? Be a niche to me is a dartboard. If I can just throw my money or my uh, time, time is money at, at a specific thing, I have a better chance of, of winning my game. Exactly right. So education, when you, when you, when you have that niche, um, and let's say it's senior living, just for example, mm -hmm. um, you can build credibility around what you share with people in that arena. And with social media marketing, it's so easy to niche market. And, mm -hmm. and it's really opened up such a, a, an opportunity for real estate agents to build a brand and become credible in an area because you can target, let's say Sun City, you can go in and create a booster and ad and you can actually circle the location of the different um, senior living uh, residences and communities around the Vegas area and you're speaking to them. You know, exactly and, you, and, right. and, and you always want to shout out and say, do you live in Sun City, Summerlin or do you live in Anthem? You know, do, do you live in McDonald Ranch? You want to just and do three ads and circle those different areas. And those people think, wow, Ruth's talking to me. Exactly right. That's that's the new way of marketing is is yes. is marketing with context. Right. The context of narrowing down the specific group or, or, or people that you're trying to target and then speaking directly through to them with things that are important to them. And yes. so, I mean, that's, that's always been the most effective way of marketing, but now it's just become more of a, uh, in the forefront because of, of social media. Right. And I see Michelle, um, who's so Boca. So she's taken, she's taken Boca Raton and she's uh, made herself the so Boca person and uh, kudos out to you. And I know you're being very successful and I know that you've even, you're even thinking about doing the senior living, which is our um, example today because many seniors move to Florida, just like 33% of our population is senior living. Right. And um, to that point, John left the 7.30 this morning to preview 23 homes for a couple that's coming in next week from Michigan to retire here. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, just saying. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so anyway, so when you get out there and, and you're building your brand and you're educating people, it's important to have a niche and become an expert in some area. Mm -hmm. You know, um, if you want to, if you want to speak to the people that, how to buy your first home. Well, you can go on Facebook and find those people that have an interest in buying their first home. So you're speaking to them. And so you're becoming an authority to those people. And that's, that's, and just give it all away. Whatever, you know, guys, give it all away, guys and girls, give it all right. away. Just <laughs> There's really no secrets anymore. <laughs> I mean, with online stuff, you can Google pretty much anything and find the answer to it. So yeah. uh, don't be afraid to share your biggest secrets. And, and I, I know in the past, like I remember uh, if I shared something, I will, my, well, my competitors will be doing it, right? Uh, I can tell you your competitors will not be doing it. We've been telling people to do video and social media marketing for the last two and a half, three years. And, and right. like very few realtors still do that. So right. Yeah. Or do it at all. They haven't uh, even right. started. Right? Right, right. Don't be afraid. So we all collaborate, you know, and we all collaborate. So if you want to take my tips today and you want to go and, and help, if you're a broker and you want to go help your people brand, take, take this video, show it to them, put my video in our video or show in your own words. We right. all, we, we come from a place of abundance, not scarcity, exactly. you know, right. and pillar content takes a little bit of research, but you know, our average age in Vegas, uh, the agents are 54 years old. We, kind of know what we're doing, you know, mm -hmm. uh, the, it's the, the millennials and the younger people coming into the, the market, our market today to become a real estate agent. They really have to do a little bit more research, but they can learn from us, you know, if we're yeah. out there, you know, educating the public and collaborating. Uh, and again, 
you know, just feel free to share anything that we say or, or any tips we give you. If you're a broker and you want to, or you're a team leader, just please. So education was number one. Now we want to engage. Engaging is the second E. So engaging is creating discussions, debates, giving your opinion, asking questions. Um, you can say, I'm looking for places to take my kids for the 4th of July. You know, does anybody have any suggestions? Um, and, and start getting feedback, engagement. So you're asking questions, you're asking people's opinions. You want to create discussion so that you get comments. Exactly right. And and then on the flip side, you want to engage in other people's posts too. That's, that's, that's the other thing you yes. talk about when you're five, five and five, Ruth, is yes. like one thing is to be shouting and, and sending a message out. Another is how do you get people to visit your profile and your page? Well, the fastest and easiest way to do that is to engage in other people's posts right and and contribute to their conversation in a way that demonstrates your expertise and how you can help them and then they naturally want to find out well who, who is ruth albrand here she made yeah. a really good comment and she goes right. to your pay your page and then like now she discovers you and then you, you have maybe a piece of content on there and they're like oh wow okay i want to chime in in here yeah. that's how it all works is this engagement process this conversation that is is two-sided not just yes. one-sided right Oh, absolutely. The five, five and five, five comments, five likes, five shares every day is 5,475 engagements a year. Mm -hmm. um, and it, does, it takes 15 minutes maybe while you're having morning coffee. So exactly anyway, right. so the engaging is very important. And um, the, if you want to say to people, for instance, and I'm shouting out a little bit to my Asian formula members that have all these videos, you know, like if you want to do an ad and say, you know, have you taken your kids to see, you know, the Siegfried Fried and Roy gardens with the dolphins? Um, click below and watch a short video about it and see how exciting it is and maybe take your children there. I mean, think about that. Yeah, absolutely. You're engaging and you're giving them a sneak preview of what they're going to see when they go to the Siegfried. Siegfried I can't say that word. Right. <laughs> Siegfried. See, thank you. <laughs> Siegfried Roy. Right. Yeah. And uh, and then um, you can go there and you can do a video, too. You know, like, oh, I, I went and this is what I did. I took my kids and, you know, right. start being a human being to the to the people and start giving them valuable information and engaging right. things to talk about. And here's a tip to find stuff that's engaging, right? I, I always spend a lot of time like, um, like asking myself, what catches my attention, right? Mm -hmm. So is there something that ever crosses your eye or whatever, even uh, when you're on social or in real life that like stops you and once you look, that's a great piece of content that you probably can lead into, <laughs> you know, making a post. Like I'll give you an example is uh, in downtown at the container park. They have a big uh, praying mantis that like yes. lights up on fire, right? right? If that was the first ten seconds of your video on Facebook, and then you zoom in and talk talk about the container, and people would stop that, like, "Oh wow, what what is that?" Right? You got their attention. Exactly, exactly right. And part of engaging with someone is is grabbing attention at the, at the first you know first few seconds of your content, and so. You know, an interesting stat would be how many people that move here have been here before? Hmm. I would think that's probably a, a pretty big percentage. You think so? Hmm. Yeah, I would think so. I mean, that was me. Did you come here before you moved here? Or did you just decide to move here and then look for homes? You you mean like actually lived here before or just visited here? Last visited. Day? visited. Oh, of course. Yeah. Yeah. I would. Yes. I mean, every, so I think. Your point I, about the container park. <laughs> exactly. I, I visited here before I lived here. Yes. Yeah. So there's so many interesting things uh, that you can tell people uh, so that when they come here, they're going to visit this or this because you said it. And if you just keep turning away time and patience, consistency, those people, when they come here, they just might use you to buy a house. Exactly what a concept, right? right? Yeah, exactly <laughs> and it's right. marketing. Right. Exactly. So, right. okay. So then we go down to the third thing, which is entertainment. You have to be entertaining. Now, you know, uh, not everybody was born an entertainer. Uh, we're not all funny. Um, 
you know, I tend to be more serious and, and I'm, a, yeah. I'm more of a trainer than an entertainer or a promoter. Sure. Sure. I mean, um, Aaron Taylor did his um, fantastic lunch and learn this week, giving housewarming tips. And I mean, how he stays so enter entertaining and engaging and, and energetic for, you know, 30 minutes and, and just captivates everybody's attention. I mean, that's just, that's not like the rest of us, you know, right. there's only a certain few people that can do that, right. but um, you can still be entertaining and not be Aaron Taylor or, um, you know, uh, gosh, uh, carrot top or whomever. Right. And, and entertainment <laughs> comes in all forms, right? It doesn't have to be funny. I think Gary V talks about it best. Um, I was listening to Ed Milet, another person I'm I'm starting to follow right now too. And Tom, I think his name is Bill Yu, uh, but he does impact theory and, and all their, their biggest thing is just be yourself, be authentic, you know, be, be willing to have egg on your face yeah. as they say. <laughs> right. Cause part of it, everybody wants Everybody likes uh, every once in a while to see uh, a train wreck, right? Yes. Which means because that could be entertaining and they can't put get their eyes off of it because they want there's a part of us that all wants to, you know, see a train wreck, a car yes. accident, a right. something, whatever. Right. Or someone yeah. doing miserably bad. Yes. Right. That, if you look at American Idol, <laughs> right, that show was built on not not the greatest. The, the marketing around American Idol was not that these singers were great. It was the William Hongs of the world that could not <laughs> sing a lick and keep in tune that that caught people's attention to go there and, and continue watching. So yeah. don't don't feel like you whatever we do you do right. Just be yourself. Yes, and that's well, that's what people want to see. Yeah, and Chelsea, uh, um, Chelsea said that you know one of she travels all the time, and so she's in a lot of uh, different parking garages and whatever. And so she videoed herself not being able to find her car, and then the next time that she had to park, she videoed where she parked her car. You know, <laughs> so I thought that that's was good. pretty clever, right? Yeah, that's that's really good. That is really clever. <laughs> That's you know? connecting to what we've all been through, right? And I'll tell you uh, a hit show that I think I, I think this guy's the most boring, dull person, and the comedy is real. I mean, it doesn't hit with me, but apparently it hits with other people. Is Larry David, right? His oh, his Larry God. David show on HBO. I mean, he's very dull and he he's very monotone. It's not yeah. like he's like this, you know. Yeah. But it works, <laughs> and you know, obviously, co-creator Seinfeld as well. So he's got a formula somewhere. Self-deprecating humor, right. I think they exactly. call it. <laughs> exactly right. You know, so. Um, yeah, Larry, you Larry David, I get embarrassed just watching him because, <laughs> <laughs> right? Right. No, it's exactly right. It's what Larry David caught in that show was just the the humor of everyday life, right? Yeah. Like just the going through life and going through certain scenarios that we're all like embarrassed about, but he. Yeah. displays it right yeah. and so i mean this entertainment portion is like yes you have to be entertaining the last thing you want to do is you know not have any type of personality at all unless you can pull that really off and have a dry sense of humor but <laughs> just be yourself in the beginning just be yourself the fact that you know you you are yourself is unique in the world and that in itself is entertainment absolutely so you have there. one face and that is powerful exactly right the exactly more you, right. the more you put it out there, the more powerful it becomes. That's right. how it works, right? Exactly. So right. then the next thing is emotional. So emotional. Okay. So most people don't want to spill their life secrets and and cry on you know video or, um, but getting excited because you're excited about your first 5K. Uh, I wish I had videoed mine. I mm -hmm. wish I had videoed my um, first half marathon. Mm -hmm. And uh, and and my journey to try to lose weight. Um, sure. You know, all those things are appeal to people's emotions because you're touching that part of them that has the same feelings and desires. Absolutely. And and not only that, what I'm finding now is, you know, I, I don't know if you you see this and I'm younger and and I'm always looking at, you know, the road ahead. Like, what's what is it that I want and what is it that like? Uh, and then I look at the people that are already there 
right? And yeah. and listen to them and I, I got trying to garner as much information from them. But one of the things that is in the back of my mind every once in a while, I was like, man, they're so far out there, right? Like these people, you know, I'm trying to get to my first, you know, two million or million and they're like at a hundred million dollars in, in wealth already. I'm like, I, I can't, it, I can't touch that yet. And so what Gary said about a few years ago, which I think is powerful, and, and, and people are slowly starting to do that. And I, I kind of started doing that, and I kind of stopped. But like, just to document your journey right now, right? Have, share with everybody a goal. Like you want to be the, the, you know, the, the number one real estate agent in Henderson or whatever it is, right? And then document that journey. What, what are you doing to get there, right? And, yes. and how, what, share with you both the wins and the struggles, right? Because emotion is a roller coaster that we go through every day it's not like we're always happy and we're always sad it's the highs and the lows and 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 sometimes people want to escape in that and then because they see you in it every day and you're like maybe a few steps ahead of where other people want to be they can connect with you a little bit yeah. more and that's the, what, what's happening on YouTube over the last few years with these like kids, you know, sharing stuff and their <laughs> slime and, and their toys. And it's like, it's like they're connecting like, oh, that's just like another person just like me in this current spot. And they're able yeah. to do it. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, and there's so, speaking of kids, I mean, you can show how you're teaching your kids how to cook or teaching right. your kids. Like I would have loved to have had a video of my mother teaching me how to iron the way you're supposed to iron, right. you know, clothes. I mean, who does that anymore? Probably. But <laughs> anyway, you know, and what a, go ahead. No, I mean, there was, there's, there's a big movement right now that that's been popular is among mothers who feel like they are failing at being, you know, mothers. Yeah. Um, and they're creating, they're coming on and talking about just the guilt that they feel about, you know, either yelling at their kids or not paying enough attention to them or not giving them everything they want and whatever and cr crying. And, but there's a community of people that like that strikes an emotional chord with mothers all around the world, right. That draws people into that type of content because, you know, it connects them as a community, yeah. um, in something that is hardly ever talked about in a public forum, but before, before the internet, before social media, now it's all coming out and it's, it's, it's catching on like wildfire. Cause the reason I know is my, my wife watches it all the time and she cares <laughs> with me. And so, yeah. The other thing is on a different, uh, kind of a little different note, you know, the, you know, John's been through a lot in the past mm. 10 years with four times cancer. He's going through radiation. Now he probably, He's not here right now. Or he wouldn't want me to say that he doesn't want to share his uh, journey. Um, I can say what he's going through, but he's not going to tell you what he's going through. Sure. And that's just him. But I, I personally think that he should share that journey because so many people go through cancer oh, and uh, things like that. And, and uh, I mean, he just had, uh, we were in Cleveland for, for five weeks and, and, um, you know, the brave, he brave person that he is had brain surgery three times because he has Parkinson's and he wanted to continue to work and live and have quality of life. And so he endured that very scary thing of having holes drilled in his head, you know, to right. implant um, those electrodes that stop his Parkinson's from the symptoms of Parkinson's so that he can go on and live his life. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, what a great story that would be to so many people because what we heard when we were there is that people are scared because it's your brain they're drilling into. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, so, but, and the, uh, once you, the more you learn about it, I mean, they're not going into your actual brain into the, mm -hmm. you know, the thing that we, the, the thing that we see. <laughs> that well, we right, see. right, not the, the yeah. tissue itself right. necessarily, yeah. right. But anyway, uh, you know, that to me is an emotional connection. You, he could have, but he chose not to, but yeah, you know, I mean, that, I mean, that's, personal, that's, that's private. And so, that's I mean, him. here's, here's my encouragement for you, Ruth, is that, you know, you obviously people experience it. I, I would love to like hear his story of, and mainly what he has been able to do to, to emotionally, what he's thinking on a daily basis to be able to continue to push forward on with his life the way he has yeah. right now. Right. It's very inspiring. It is. Um, but for you, I and mean, he, you got to allow him to like 
live his space and yes. and share your journey on that side of it because you have a story <laughs> being a part of that his spouse and yeah. going through all of this and and just focus on that you know what are you saying what what are the 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 fears and thoughts and 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 questions and 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 actions that you took during that whole period of time and what you're doing now to like help them through all of this as well you know what i mean yeah. so i, I think your other. story you i don't know why you, you always forget that you have a wonderful <laughs> side of things as well that people would love to understand because yeah. there's spouses out there that have husbands or you know or, or wives that are going through this that could benefit greatly from what yeah. you're experiencing and how you're pushing through all of this too as well so well that's true and then i have to give that some serious thought oh, and, yeah. and, and possibly do that um mm -hmm. linda joe has something to say about that let me just uh see what linda has to say uh, he should share his journey. He could help so many people to show his strength. And yeah, everybody loves John. That's true. Ah, John. It's so, everybody loves he's John. so, I know. I mean, <laughs> what's, he's such a powerful man. Yeah. And you never know it if you met him. He but, walks softly, doesn't he? Yes, he walks <laughs> softly. He's the he's the he's the guy that you got to make sure you pay attention to because <laughs> he's going to strike at any distance. Yeah. Um, but you know i mean yeah i would love to hear kind of you know what he's going through as far as that but that's it you know something very personal i can't yeah. imagine you know um I mean, but, and uh, he's still in the scary stage like right now I sure. think he's going into his second week of radiation for seven weeks and um he uh still goes down to Luruvo cleveland clinic to um to it's amazing what they can do they control his his Parkinson's with a, an iPad. Seriously. Mm. I mean, and what exciting thing that is, you know, uh, that I would like to share someday more details with people. But if I don't, if I don't be quiet, I'm going to be in so much trouble today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's, let's, let's move let's on. Move on. Uh, <laughs> I better move that's on the because... <laughs> emotional side of the branding <laughs> yeah. process that's here. A, yeah. Let's go here. <laughs> but I can tell you here what's great about that interaction we just had here is like, this is the conversation that everybody has about sharing their personal life on social, right? I mean, there's a, there's an intimate part of it that, you know, we don't want to reveal. And, and I, we're here to say that you don't have to tell everything. I mean, just, be yourself, right? Share yeah. what comes out. And the most magical thing that could happen is to allow yourself in a moment where you're open. And if you get, happen to be filming something, allow yourself to go through what it is that you normally go through, right? Yeah. And it, that, that part of it there becomes magic. There's an authentic part of you that gets revealed that people like in that moment connect with you at a level that they'll never connect with you. And I'll give you an example here. I, I spoke at uh, my own personal sales convention and uh, uh, one of the, this older gentleman a colleague asked me like, you know, what, what keeps you so positive and going every day, Max? And in that moment, it hit me hard um, and I started to tear up because, you know, before uh, like three, four years ago, I went through a major traumatic financial experience that like, you know, what rocked my world. Right. And, and in that moment though, I, I realized coming out of it, the learning was that like, I got to accept full responsibility. Right. And if it's, if it's up to me, then I can change things. I, can, I can't change what's happening around me, but I can change the meaning that I put behind what is happening and take the action necessary to make sure one, it doesn't happen again, or two, uh, change the course of my future, right? That's so you all had I can a breakthrough. Change. Exactly. But I was tearing up. My whole point is that is like I teared up. And surprisingly, the result of all that was I was able to reach some of the my other colleagues that uh, thought I was a little bit, you know, like always too positive for them. <laughs> all right. You know, there's some people, I mean, you get it. Like I'm very positive a lot of the times. And sometimes right. that's a turnoff for people. And I get it. I understand that, you know, this guy's way too positive for me. And I want to wallow in a different type of energy. I get it. But it opened up a door, right. For them to connect with me in one piece uh, with that type of, you know, vulnerability. And I encourage it. That's, that's the emotional side of what we're talking about. Marketing is like, if you can tap into people's feelings right and because a lot of us don't we feel the same emotions all the time like we're, we're dumb to like you know life 
And, you know, some of us want to feel excitement to feel. That's why we go to movies and listen to music. We want to feel, you know, yeah. the spectrum of full emotion. And so that's, I'll, that's all I wanted to share with that, because I think that's an important story. It is. Allow yourself to, to be out there. Yeah. And thank you, pace. Linda Joe. Thank you, Linda Joe, for your comment. Uh, I appreciate that so much. And someday I'm going to share the whole story and uh, hopefully it'll help a lot of people. So thank mm -hmm. you for that. Um, let's talk about exclusive. So we're on our fifth E, right? We had educational. Yes. Okay. So everybody knows we, we have engagement, we have entertainment and emotional and exclusive and engaging. And now we're on exclusive. So I think I said those out of order, but anyway, exclusive, that's like insider content. Like, oh, there's a house coming soon. It creates a sense of urgency with people because they want to see that house before it gets on the market, especially if you, you know, do a short video and say, oh, I've got this great listing and it's got this fantastic backyard. And as soon as it goes on the market, it's not going to last, you know, so you create the sense of urgency and that exclusive, you make people feel like they're part of a, you know, the inner circle. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I want to give a shout out to uh, a real estate agent down in uh I think Louisiana, his name is Trevor Carville. And maybe we'll have him on the show one time, but he's doing a lot of good stuff on, on social media. And what he's done also is created, uh, on top of the people that engage with him, he invites them to a private group, right? If yeah. whoever engages with his content and stuff like that, he invites to a private group. And in that private group, he puts out like, uh, you know, the pre-listing, right? And only those people get to, yeah. to, to know and see his pre-listing and all the details before everybody else. And, and, you know, part of it is real estate agents and obviously past clients and stuff like that. But it creates this form of exclusive exclusivity that you're talking about here, uh, which I, I love what he's doing over there doing that. And again, if you do things like that consistently and you're a real estate agent and, and you're, you're a listing agent and you know you're going to list a house and people know to, to kind of, oh, here comes uh, Ruth. She's going to tell us about, you know, uh, something that hasn't hit the market yet. And they start watching you consistently because you're consistently doing that. You know, right. that's just another uh, little tip out there about consistency. But exclusivity is so important. And, you know, uh, sneak previews, um, you can do a, a short interview, you know, with someone um, and and then do a like a sneak preview before the interview. That's what I meant mm -hmm. to say. I said it backwards. Right. But yeah, <laughs> do the sneak preview and then 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 actually do the interview. And you can do it with, you know, local merchants or, or you know, like we, we like to go to Mastriani's restaurant. And if I could ever pin Pete down to do a short interview with him and then right. do, you know, go out there and, and talk about his restaurant because we really love it. Sure. Um, he's just hard to pin down. But I'm sure that everybody has relationships with with people like that, whether it's merchants or restauranteurs mm -hmm. or, uh, you know, they're 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 um, the soccer coach. Right. You know, I mean, there's just so Everybody many community, opportunities. Right. Yeah. But do a sneak preview of an interview and kind of what right. people's appetite and um, and start generating, uh, you know, some uh, buzz out there. Right. Or behind the scenes stuff. Yeah. Right. Or behind the or scenes. bonus content uh, that, you know, if you, you like my page, you'll be able to see all this stuff. Um, or give out, you know, three tips and only give two tips away that still has a huge impact. But leave if you want to see the third tip, go to my Facebook page. Yeah. You know, I mean, have a call to action consistently and or check out my YouTube channel or whatever where you want to direct them. So and I think to Gary V's point, you know, your life is exclusive. Mm -hmm. And he's always saying, like you said earlier, document your life. Like, you know, I was thinking this morning, I'm out there at five o'clock and or 515 and it's the the sun's starting to rise i can still see the lights in this from up here at red rock i can still see the lights in the city and and i'm thinking about the show today and what i'm going to talk about and you know it and uh, document my journey you know i did that for a little while last year and then my phone started acting funky and i stopped doing it <laughs> right yeah and uh, and then pinky told me i need to be more entertaining so you know, I have to figure that out um, and that I talk too much, too long. So yeah. I am, I'm working on it though. I'm, you know, I was going to use <laughs> yeah. Rocky for my tips, right? I right. got one tip out before the poor little guy had to go to doggy heaven. And um, he goes, I think it was about attention. 
you know, mm. and, and uh, so, yeah, that was going to be exclusive, Rocky's exclusive tips. But anyway, yeah, there's so many things that you can do to be exclusive because it's your life and that's exclusive because nobody else is doing <laughs> what they're doing. <laughs> exactly right. And you, you know, know what, great. I just want to say, you know, I, I mentioned earlier that John um, is previewing 23 homes today. And the reason why, and that's not his style, but the couple that's coming from Michigan uh, sent him a spreadsheet, mm. you know, and yesterday I'm looking at this spreadsheet because he's trying to figure out how he prints this huge spreadsheet, which they created on legal paper, but he doesn't see that because he's not techie. Right. right and I'm right. like, okay, we have to shrink it down. We have to do this. I'm like, these people are really, you know, these people are, I would like to do a testimonial with these people. You know, mm. I'd like to, to, I mean, if I were selling real estate, but you know, that's not John's thing. He's not into right. the things I'm into, but right. if you all are out there and you have somebody that would do that, that would go through all the detail, they have an actual spreadsheet and then they determined what they wanted to see first based on their, their favorites. They had 23 homes and the year that the home was built was one of their major priorities. And then, um, I forget what the second thing was, whether it had a third bedroom or something because they are retiring, mm. that wasn't important to them. And so, but they did this whole spreadsheet and I'm thinking, wow, what a, what a great, you know, if I was a real estate agent, I would be saying, look what I got today. And, you know, look how I'm going to have to deal with them tomorrow. I'm going to go preview these homes. And then tomorrow you show people that you're previewing the homes. And, sure. and then when you meet them, you, you do a testimonial with them. And so it becomes a whole story and it's exclusive to you. You yeah, have exactly. content and context right there right exactly the the best <laughs> exclusive content is yourself <laughs> because right. no one else is living your life right, right. so yeah. take advantage of that yes for sure and i guess the only other tip that we could give today that we might go into more than another um because we're, we're running on uh, 50 minutes here uh is content with context mm -hmm. and when you create your personal brand with content and context um, you're creating an experience for people. And so the content is the message. Let's see how to explain it. And the context is the meaning of the message. Mm -hmm. And that's, that is uh, built on these five E's. So when you're building, when you're doing the education, the emotional, the, ex, you know, the exclusive, the entertaining, the engaging, think about that. Think about your content and then what's the message in your content? Right, right. And, and that comes with practice. That comes with practice. And um, it's like if you're, let me just use a, an example. Like if you're pregnant, all of a sudden you notice how many people are pregnant or mm -hmm. you just bought a white car. Now all of a sudden you see all these other people who are driving white cars. Well, when you start doing these five E's, you'll be amazed at how you start looking at your life as content mm -hmm. and then what message you can actually bring to people. It, 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 and I mean, I, it happens for me because like I said, I'm out there walking this morning thinking, you know, how, how can I make my show better? How can I make it more entertaining? You start mm -hmm. thinking about it. It just yeah. becomes a natural, uh, a natural thing that you, you do. Right. And I, I look at my buying behavior recently because uh, I bought a couple of things on like just Instagram posts. Right. And, and what caught my attention. And, and here's the thing about context is that you can't the, the days of you just saying, hey, I'm a realtor and I sell real estate. That, that, that Those days are over from a marketing standpoint. What you need to do is demonstrate mm -hmm. your life being a realtor, doing realtor stuff. Right. And then giving educational entertainment value back. So it's not necessary you standing in place, but you actually doing real estate stuff. And I'll give you an example of this. I, so I bought a magnetic phone thing for my car. Right. So it's basically it puts hooks up into your vent and it's a, a magnet. Right. But it wasn't some guy telling me about the magnet. It was actually them demonstrating, you know, how it worked. Right. And the frustrations around previous products that are used. And because I can relate to that and I've lived through, you know, the pain of some of the other uh, phone holders and cars, that content plus the context in which they put it in 
you know, the frustrations, the, the, mm -hmm. how the mechanism works and the fact that now the iPhone, the new iPhones have the, the, the wireless charging capabilities, right. All in the Samsung's that, how that is built into the feature. So you got to make sure that when you're building your content, that it, you're not just speaking, but you're demonstrating, mm -hmm. right. What yes. it is that you're speaking. So yes. go through it and demonstrate it. Yes. And then, and then what you're going to learn next is that you repurpose it and, and all the different platforms, LinkedIn, you know, you can do a blog about it, a podcast about it. There's so much you can do once you start, but you've got to begin, you've got to begin building your brand. And hopefully today we've shared with you how to begin. Um, and with the educational and the engaging and um, the exclusive and the emotional and um I missed one already. Uh, <laughs> entertainment. Entertainment. I missed that yeah. one. Yeah. Entertainment. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So anyway, you can rewatch this and uh, glean from it. Uh, hopefully some tips on how to just get started. Right. Just just get started. Maybe it's educational that you're going to start with, because, my gosh, in this town, I mean, we're so blessed to be in Las Vegas and so much going on and so much you can educate people with at the same time you can entertain them. And you, uh, you know so much about real estate and you can help so many people and mm -hmm. you just have to get started. You just have to do it, guys. Yeah. And it's the it. best way and the least expensive way to, to brand, to become a brand out there and to get more business, build your business, maintain your business, whatever your goal is. Exactly right. So uh, one last comment. I, I don't know if uh, I forgot the name of the artist and it used to be on Netflix. I don't think it's anymore, but there was this lady, she's an artist. She used to draw, but she does a lot of um, physical art, meaning she incorporates her body into her art of wow. some sort. And it's like, and she's world famous. And she did a do documentary in uh, with her trip to New York. She did 30 days where all she did at the, one of the museums or whatever is she sat in a chair and she had an empty chair across and people lined up just to sit and stare at her in silence, look into her eyes basically. And she did nothing other than just sit and look at them. Right. You mm -hmm. think like, dude, this is boring, right? Why well, I just <laughs> want to sit and look at somebody, but I can tell you what's beauty about the human emotional spectrum is that when they looked at her, right. There's a, a profound energy transfer that happens and they begin to feel emotions. You know, they begin to have conversations about their life and why this moment is so powerful for them. And people began to tear up. They started having like wow. epiphanies. You know, it's like almost like a meditative type of experience for some of these people. And so my whole point in telling you this is that don't don't filter what you think is entertaining to people. Because right. you'll be surprised at <laughs> what can entertain. entertain people. And yeah. because of that, one of the things that I'm going to put it out there, because I, I think I want to eventually want to do that, is I, I wanted to do eventually do like a 30-day a challenge for me too, where all I do is get on Facebook Live, tell people, hey, if you want to spend 10 minutes in silence and you want an accountability partner, I'm going to be, you know, in front, doing a Facebook Live, looking into the camera and saying nothing. <laughs> go for 30 days this time this date right, right. and i thought i'm like how powerful is that I'm like i don't know we'll try it but yeah. you know obviously my own conversation my own head go like uh who's gonna watch that or how's that gonna matter but yeah. i gotta get over that and i just need to do it because what i saw on the video was like wow and based on the feedback the people who were experiencing that with her was you know they had a profound moment of inspiration yeah, or yeah or emotional connection that they you know, have been craving for. So that's cool. That's cool. Well, it, I want to wrap up today and I want to make yeah. sure everybody knows that March 7th, uh, 8th, uh, 7th Six. or 6th. Yeah. We changed it yesterday. It's oh, yeah. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Um, we had a, uh, Kane's going to be out of town unexpectedly for one of the days. So we're changing it to Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And it's 10 to 2 at North American Title Social Media Strategy Academy. Learn how to do these things. Um, we talk about branding. Uh, we show you how to do it, make it easy for you. 
because uh, now once you know things, they become easier. And we get into LinkedIn, we get into Facebook, we get into your personal page, your how to do live videos, we get into um, how to create ads that actually generate business for you uh, with phone numbers and uh, names and email addresses. And we tell you and show you how you convert those leads. Leads are easy to get, and right now they're very underpriced on social media, but you have to know how to convert those leads, and that's the important ingredient to uh, building your business. Um, and then I'm so jazzed because Pinky is coming back March the 1st, and that's Friday, mm. uh, two weeks from Friday, and she's coming back, and she's going to do her deep dive video and her Instagram jam. So from 10 to noon, we're going to have um, – the uh, video and then a free lunch. And then we're going to have from uh, one to three, the uh, Instagram jam and Pinky is entertaining, educational, <laughs> engaging, yes, emotional is. and exclusive. She is all the five when it comes to branding Absolutely. and uh, yeah, just love Pinky. Follow her. Pinky knows Naples. Um, she will show you do what she does because she is, she is really knocking it dead to the point that, you know, in three years, um, she had, they had moved down to Naples and had no business, got on, became the started to become the mayor of Naples. And now uh, she's busy and bringing her husband, Josh, into the business. And he'll be here that week. Um, and we love Josh. He is just a doll baby. And uh, we're so excited that she's coming. And hopefully, I'm sure he'll be at the class. Everybody gets to meet Pinky's husband. Right. And uh, when you want to sign up, just call Siri at 702-990-0480. And please join us. It's going to be an exciting March 1st and then the following week with uh, the Social Media Strategy Academy to get you moving on social media and doing it the right way for the least amount of money and saving the most time. Absolutely. I, I don't know what else I could offer everybody. <laughs> right. All right. So go there while the market allow you know, while this market is still very good. I yeah. right? create a brand. And not only that, when the market gets bad, up use what you learn here and then increase your exposure during that period of time. So when the market recovers, you you come out ahead of everybody else. Exactly. So. Yes. Yes. Thank you everybody for, for joining us today. And yes. uh, Max, thank you so much. And again, thanks everybody for a wonderful birthday, wonderful birthday week. My staff, my friends. Um, I just was overjoyed, you know, with my birthday this year and I look forward to about 32 more. So <laughs> Just saying. Absolutely. All right. Have a great week, okay. everybody. All right. Bye.